just look at the, um, when we talk about muscles contracting and we think about the bulge of a muscle, the power of the muscle, the part of the muscle that we're talking about are the extrafusal fibers that, that makes up most of the muscle cell. But there are also intrafusal fibers and those are very important. Intrafusal fibers are inside the muscle spindle. Extrafusal fibers are outside the muscle spindle. It's the job of the intrafusal fibers to detect stretch and the rate of stretch. And their, their job is to protect the muscle from tearing or from being suddenly, suddenly stretched too quickly. <clears throat> um, intrafusal muscle fibers are, uh, are sensory in nature. So they have nerves which have afferent fibers or they have nerves or neurons which are afferent. Remember afferent, A, letter A, arrives at the central nervous system, arrives in the central nervous system. So the uh, nerve impulses detecting stretch and the rate of stretch go from the muscle uh, through afferent sensory fibers up to the spinal cord or part of the brain. And then the spinal cord, the central nervous system returns through efferent letter E, E like exits, exiting the central nervous system through efferent motor fibers, returns uh, an action potential down to the, the extrafusal fibers of the muscle. And that causes a muscle contraction. So two sets, sensory being afferent and motor being efferent. Uh, also in the muscle structure in the tendon specifically are the Golgi tendon organs. The Golgi tendon organs, their job is to detect load. Uh, the intrafusal muscle fibers detect stretch. The Golgi tendon organs detect load. Uh, yeah, so the question is, uh, which does reciprocal inhibition? So reciprocal inhibition means that if a muscle is, if the body receives stimulus that a muscle is undergoing some kind of change, either speed or load, uh, I'm not going to tell you which one. You guys have to answer that. If a muscle is undergoing some kind of change that may be unstable or dangerous for it, the um, central nervous system returns a motor efferent letter E impulse to the antagonist in order to, um, to inhibit the antagonist and allow the muscle that's being in question to be shortened so that it can contract. So um, let's say that someone is testing the nerve reflex at the biceps brachii muscle, or better yet, let's say that someone is uh, someone is uh, doing some kind of some kind of bicep curl. Uh, this is a common way that the bicep tendon is is torn through either a very heavy bicep curl, uh, or sometimes through uh, through through bracing an item, uh, like doing a tire flip in a strongman competition. So let's say that, that someone is overloading the bicep, uh, overloading the bicep, and um, they're about to suddenly let the weight go through the eccentric movement. And the body senses that the stretch and the rate of stretch, the rate of lengthening in this case, is too fast. What can happen is the body can contract the muscle against the, the extension, can contract the muscle to stop the fibers from lengthening. And in order to contract them, to contract the bicep, it has to inhibit the tricep to allow that to happen, right? Because the bicep is the agonist, the tricep is the antagonist. Um, you could explain it many ways. If you if you 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 tap the the biceps tendon in order to elicit um, a uh, into a, to elicit a reflex response, you're in effect lengthening or stretching the biceps, and that tapping will cause a shortening of the biceps, a quick shortening of the biceps muscle. And in order for that biceps muscle to shorten, to contract concentrically, the tricep, the antagonist has to be inhibited. The tricep has to, to allow or to relax. So the reciprocal, can you guys unmute now? So the process of reciprocal inhibition stops, uh, stops what? Stretch or load? No, 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 I should ask you first. Reciprocal inhibition is... A result of information collected from what structure? From the intrafusal muscle fibers or from the Golgi tendon organs? Golgi tendon organs. Mm, unfortunately, it's intrafusal muscle fibers. So Golgi tendon organs, they sense load. 
So with load, if the load is too heavy, you, the body needs you to let go. You need to let go and allow lengthening. So that would be agonist inhibition by the Golgi tendon organs. Stretching or shortening, like through a reflex test or overloading, uh, overloading concentrically uh, allows for, no, overloading eccentrically uh, allow, ha has to have antagonist inhibition, reciprocal inhibition. So when you hear reciprocal, think antagonist. The other one is called agonist inhibition, but they're not going to say agonist inhibition and reciprocal inhibition on the test. They're not going to say which one does intrafusal muscle fibers do. Uh, reciprocal inhibition, by the way, there's two, reciprocal and, and agonist. They're not going to do that. And reciprocal is antagonist. So you have to remember that reciprocal is antagonist, which is the antagonist muscle relaxing or allowing the agonist to shorten. The agonist, the agonist has to, has to uh, be inhibited, in other words, to lengthen or to let go. When the load of something is too heavy, the load is detected by the Golgi tendon organs. The stretch or the rate of stretch is detected by the intrafusal muscle fibers. So let's, let's, why don't you guys repeat after me a few times, right? Intrafu uh, um, reciprocal inhibition, reciprocal inhibition. inhibition is done, is done with intrafusal muscle fibers. Done with intrafusal muscle fibers. Yeah, for stretch or the rate of stretch. For stretch. Or the rate of stretch. Yeah, agonist inhibition Agonist comes from the Golgi tendon organs. Comes from Golgi tendon organs. Yeah, as a result of load. As a result of load. Yeah, reciprocal inhibition comes from the intrafusal muscle fibers as a result of stretch. You can do it. Inhibition comes from intrafusal mu muscle fibers. We've lost too many. We've lost too many people. We've lost too many. No one, no one, no, no one gets left behind. Okay. Reciprocal inhibition comes from the intrafusal fibers. Comes from the intrafusal fibers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition. Comes from the intrafusal fibers. Comes from the intrafusal fibers. Which detects stretch or the speed of stretch. Which the stretch or the speed of stretch? Yes. Okay. Stretch or the speed of stretch is detected by intrafusal fibers. Okay. Stretch or the speed of stretch. Come on, guys. Stretch, stretch or the speed, speed of stretch speed. is detected by the intrafusal fibers. fibers. It results in reciprocal inhibition. It results in reciprocal inhibition. Good. Force is detected by the Golgi tendon organs, which results in agonist inhibition. Force is indicated, indicated by the Golgi tendon organs. Good. That is antagonist inhibition. Uh, agonist inhibition. Now, the, now, now, two of you are not. Two of you are not speaking. Uh, okay, let's let's do it again. Okay, force is detected by the Golgi tendon organs. Forces are detected by Goji tendons organs. Nice, which results in agonist, agonist, agonist inhibition. Results in agonist inhibition. Sorry, I got cut off for a second. Inhibition. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, okay, so the first phrase I said reciprocal inhibition is a result of uh, is, is is a result of the intrafusal muscle fibers detecting stretch. The second time I said stretch is detected by the intrafusal muscle fibers resulting in reciprocal inhibition. Now, now which one do we put, are we gonna put first in that phrase? Reciprocal? No. Mm, intrafusal, intrafusal, oh. intrafusal. Uh, this, is, this is a study technique. Okay, look, let me just write it out for you. Uh, reciprocal inhibition. You know what? You can you can watch the video. Okay, intrafusal fibers detect stretch or the rate of stretch. Intrafusal fibers, fibers. detect stretch. stretch or the rate of stretch. stretch. Everybody, intrafusal fibers, intrafusal fibers, detect stretch or the rate of stretch. Stretch or the rate of stretch. Intrafusal fiber stretch stress or the rate of stretch. <laughs> yes, they can result in antagonist inhibition. 
or reciprocal result, inhibition. Antagonist inhibition. Good, or reciprocal inhibition. Or reciprocal, or reciprocal inhibition. Yes, Golgi tendon organs detect load. Golgi, Golgi tendon, detect load. tendon organs detect load. Detects load. They can result in agonist inhibition. They can result in agonist inhibition. Agonist inhibition. Oh, yes. 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 Good. Good. Which does antagonist inhibition? Which um, one does antagonist inhibition? The in the, in the intrafusal. Yes. Yeah. Which one does agonist inhibition? Somebody other than Vincent. Efren. I mean, afferent. Uh, both Extra of those. Fusel, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's it's not extrafusal. Extrafusal fibers are the are the main the main power source for the for the muscle, right? They're the ones that do most of the work. The ones that are outside the muscle spindle, they're the motor, the motor ones. Which okay. sensory organ? Which sensory organ does agonist inhibition? The Golgi tendon organs or the intrafusal fibers? Golgi. Dora. The Golgi. Very good. Very good. Uh, which one does? Uh, now, you know, if you thought I was already mean, which one does agonist activation? Which one causes the agonist to contract? The Goji. Very good, very good. And which one causes the antagonist to activate? Uh, uh, yeah, that one. The intrafusal, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, now, does anyone want me to explain activation of the agonist, activation of the antagonist. If it's unclear to you, now would be a good time to, to go through that. No, okay, if you change your mind, let me know. We'll do one more thing for the, for the muscles and then we're gonna move on to the lesson for tonight.